this is going to be a nice introduction to writing a lot of code for some things that you haven't used before in a way that maybe you haven't used them. It does not provide you nearly everything you need. In fact, it gives you no notes. There are several libraries missing. So we have to go over what we need to do, what we want to accomplish, and how we're going to get that done. So let's start with readability. Now, presumably you've already read this. There's some very, very important things in here. I'm not going to go over what readability does line by line, but we are going to go over the important things. What we're doing is we are calculating the readability of an item based on the number of words, sentences, and letters in that input. So. The most important things here, aside from the reading, because you'll need to know what libraries we're going to use, because not all of it this week was in the lecture. So this is very, very important here. These are going to be some things that we're using. We're going to be using this particular index function. We're also going to be using the math that's provided here, this multiplied by 100. So this divided by this times 100. Those things are going to be used in your code. However, all you're provided with this week is this. So once you read readability, please take some advice from my week one video and note your code so you know what you have to do. I've already done those notes and I'm going to provide you them here so that we can see where we need to go. But in summary, what we're doing is we need a program that takes an input as a text, counts the number of letters, words, and sentences in that text, and calculates the reading level using the formula provided and outputs that reading level as a string. So the notes are going to be as follows. We need to get the input, we need to calculate the letters, we need to calculate the words, we need to calculate the sentences, and we need to calculate the two values of L and S, which in this are letters and sentences, and the index formula to that represents the reading level and then output the reading level of that text. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do here is we are going to get our input. So we need the user to input something. So let's go ahead and string text. And we're going to use get string here. And we're also going to be using string length. So before we do that, let's go ahead and include our library here. We're going to need to include and we need string.h because we won't be able to do these functions without them. So string text is equal to get string. And it's going to say text and space. And that will prompt the user to input whatever text it is they're going to input. Then we're going to calculate the letters and words in a text. And we're going to loop through it and check if it is a letter and plus plus and whatnot. So we're going to set up the parameters for that. So we need int for letters. Now this is equal to 0. But there's a tricky one here that they went over in the lecture where words is equal to 1. And once we start calculating the words, I'll explain that when we get there. But that one's really important to know. And sentences is going to be equal to 0 as well. So let's close that out. 4 where int i is equal to 0, i is less than the string length of the text, i++. Plus plus. So this is helping us count each of the letters in the text for any time that it's less than the total length. Now there's a function that we're going to have to use here called isAlpha but we can't use the isAlpha function without first importing the library. Again, you'll find this in the reading. I don't think it was included in the lecture, but this is gonna be from C type. So include C type dot H, and now we can use the get alpha function. I wrote this code previously using the ASCII table where I was looking for things between 65 and 90 and 97 to 122. However, I found the easier way was to include the ctype.h and use the isAlpha function. It's actually much more convenient. So let's go ahead and get this loop opened here. And we are going to put this one here. So if isAlpha which we can now use text of i and then we're going to do letters 
So this is just counting the letters, right? Plus, plus. So that is the solution to counting the letters. And actually, let me go ahead and space this out so we know what we're doing better there. And we're going to do the same thing to this. So the next one is to count the sentences. Now, the lecture went over that there's really no way to count the sentences, right? Uh, what you have to do is you have to count the spaces between the words to count the words. And I apologize, I didn't mean sentences, I meant words. So what you do is, in order to count the number of words, you have to count the spaces between two words. But the reason words has to start as one is because there's no space between the first word and there's not going to be a space between the last word and the punctuation ending. So in other words, if you have the sentence, this is, that's two words. But if you don't start at one, it's only going to count one space and it'll tell you that there's one word. So you have to begin this one in the declarations here as one to make sure that you're counting right that way it counts. This is with one space as two words. So that's why you got to do it that way. So let's go ahead and do else if text i equal equal and we're just going to do the space. Oh, just one space there. And that's how we're going to count spaces. And once we do that, it's going to count words plus plus. And finally, we are going to count the sentences. Now again, not really a way to particularly count the sentences. So the only way to do that is to count what sentences end in. So we're going to use another else if here. Else if text i is equal and we're going to use the period as one indicator or text i is equal we're going to use the exclamation point or text i is equal and we're going to use the question mark here now this is going to work for this program, but it would not be the most dynamic way to do things. Some languages, like Spanish, will begin and end in a question mark, and one of those will be upside down. So this will work for this particular program, but is probably not the best functionality long term. However, let's go ahead and end it out for now, since we know it's going to work for what we need. Sentences plus plus. So now we've calculated letters, we've calculated words, and we've calculated sentences. So we're going to close that, and then we are going to close that for loop there. And we are going to move on to the float function. Now, the float function, in order to use that, we have to first include the library that allows us to use it. So include math.h. And now we can use the library for the float function, which they did go over in the lecture. I'm going to float L. Now remember, L is just what we are using. I spoke about this in my week one video, and they don't really go over it a lot, which kind of bugs me. But L can be anything. L can be a word. It could be apple. It could be banana. It could be daylight. It could be nighttime. It doesn't matter. We're just declaring it as L, meaning we have to use it as L going forward in the program. However, when building some programs, it might make sense to make L letters, all capital, because we've already declared lowercase letters, but big case letters rather than just L, or big case sentences rather than just S. We're just going to use L for now, but remember that variable, whatever you name it, is what the computer is going to recognize it as. Now, this math here comes from the uh, screen that I showed you the first time, right? So I'll go back to that in a second once you see this times 100. And there's going to be another one, but let's go back to readability right here. So the text input 65 letters, four sentences, et cetera, et cetera, right? So per 100 words, because 65 divided by 14, so we're talking letters divided by words, right? Which is exactly what we did here, letters divided by words. And the same thing's going to be true on sentences, right? So four sentences per 14 words. So sentences divided by words, it gives you that math right there. So we're going to go back and we're going to do float s 
is equal to float this time of sentences, just like it said, divided by the float of words times 100. Again, this math was provided to you, so it's already there in the reading. So you guys should be good on that. Then we need to calculate the index using a formula that takes L and S into account. This index represents the value of the reading level of that text. Well, again, that was already provided for us, so we actually have the index right here. So we're just going to use that formula, and we're going to go ahead and put that into our code to help do that. So let's go ahead and set that now. And we're going to do int for index is equal to round, another math function here, which is why we need that math library. So 0 0.0588 times length minus 0 0.296 times s minus 15.8. And that was the provided formula. So then we need to output what the reading grade level is. So let's move that down there and begin our if loop. We should have an if, uh, an else if, and an else, right? Because we are only doing before grade blank, grade 16 plus, and then grade blank, right? So let's go ahead and get those in there. So if the index, the formula above, is less than 1, then we need a printf function here. And it was before grade 1 perfect so that covers that one and then we are going to get our else if the index is index is greater than 16 printf and then it's going to be grade 16 plus backslash n end quote let's put that quote there where it belongs and our final function should be else printf grade percent i backslash n of the index and we are good to go now remember when the printf is executed, uh, it replaces the percent %i format specifier with the value of the integer argument that immediately follows it. Now, we used percent %d in a previous video. Percent %i and percent %d are kind of interchangeable, um, but percent %i is what is typically used when the integer value being printed is expressed in a base other than 10, like a binary or a hexadecimal. So that's why we're using percent %i there. So let's go ahead and make readability and it looks like I forgot a semicolon so let's go fix that real quick so make readability and it looks like I misspelled something on line 40 here yes sentences so again these things are all going to make or break you but luckily when you try and make it It'll tell you to fix it because it's broken. So make readability goodness me. All right, so I meant index on line 43. So I get for out typing my brain. Make readability. dot slash readability so 
So let's input one of these sample texts here. Let's go with grade 10 here. Copy that, paste it. Grade 10 easily. Dot slash readability. And let's just try one more. Let's try grade 16 plus here. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check style real quick. Looks good, all right, no changes there. And let's go ahead and run the check on readability. See how we did? And there you have it. So everything looks good, style's good. We've got all of our math right. We imported all of the necessary libraries. Everything looks good. Guys, if these videos are helping you out, remember, like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions about any of them, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I will respond to those and keep these things going and keep them updated. I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.